Hi, Ken here. Um, here is what we ended up with after the last video. Uh, this is our bench seat here, more or less completely modeled. Um, what I thought we'd do uh, to prepare for the next step is to go ahead and clean up the mesh a little bit. Um, the next step being uh, making permanent uh, materials and textures for these objects. Uh, keep in mind, these, these colors here are just kind of to make it nicer to look at in the viewport. I think it's helpful to get a better idea of what you're modeling to have some at least uh, placeholder colors when you're trying to model. I don't know. I think it's a good idea. Remember if you don't <clears throat> if you don't want to see um, these colors you can always go back to your material and turn them off and look at everything um, in the the default you know gray material of, uh, of Blender. But Let's go ahead and turn those back on just because, I don't know, I think it's nicer. All right, so uh, I've done one or two things. Um, first, I'm going to shift select this layer here and you'll see that our camera and now our lamp, um, these two objects are moved down to this layer here by themselves just to kind of keep them out of the way of everything. Uh, this layer is where our object that we're going to be modeling on is, where we're still working. But I made a copy of that, and I moved it down here. Just in case we mess something up, we'll always have a copy to fall back on. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and clean up this mesh here to prepare it um, for texturing. Uh, not that we're going to do that right now, but I figure while we're working on this, we might as well get it ready. All right, first thing... Um, Select this uh, seat, hide it. We're going to select our stripes, uh, H to hide. Select our base. Now let's go into edit mode um, and look at the base here. Uh, this face on the top is never going to be seen because the seat sits on top of it and the bottom is definitely never going to be seen because it'll be sitting on the floor. So those faces we can get rid of. Uh, we don't need them because they're not going to be seen and extra faces are only going to take up space uh, in our uh, texture when we get to that point. Uh, we'll get a little more into that. Also, rendering faces that are never going to be seen takes uh, computing power away <laughs> from your scene and makes it take just a little bit longer. So let's get rid of that. We'll just make it look a little bit neater. Now if we just delete that face, um, I think that we'll probably see around the edges here we'll see a gap but I believe yes we have a bevel modifier on this object here so what I'm gonna do is if we go back into object mode we can now apply this bevel modifier and what that'll do is it'll apply the modified geometry um, and then we'll be able to look at it in edit mode we'll be able to look at the extra geometry that's in there so can't do that in edit mode. Uh, you have to do that in object mode. So let's apply it. All right? You'll see that nothing's changed, but let's go back into edit mode. Now you'll see that we have some extra geometry here. And this extra geometry is going to cover up that gap, I think, that we would see if we just deleted this whole top face. So let's go into face selection mode. I'll use control tab. We'll go into face selection mode. We'll hit that top face, X to delete faces. And let's do the same thing on the bottom, X to delete faces. Now go back into um, tab, back in the object mode, Alt H to unhide everything. And looks like we're looking pretty good. If we're going to see it anywhere, it would be right here, which we can see a little bit of a gap maybe, but I don't think we're going to zoom that far in and look at that exact point. Uh, in our final render. Of course we could also we could grab that edge and just slide it in a little bit to cover that up but I don't think that's any big deal and it looks like we're looking fine in the front and on the sides so nothing to worry about there. So that object um, should be ready to go. So we're gonna hide that pick our seat here and the faces on the bottom we're not going to see. So let's tab, whoops tab back into edit mode <clears throat> and we don't have a, a, a bevel modifier on this but we do have a subsurf modifier I don't want to apply that just yet uh, so let's pick 
this face and this face for sure. That's shift right click to select both of them. X delete faces, okay. Now if we delete this one or this one back here, I think it's going to show a gap a little bit um, either on the front or the rear. So we're going to leave those. But the faces that are between our bottom cushion here and the top cushion I think we can get rid of. So what I'm going to do in edit mode, um, let me just hit A to make sure everything's deselected. Hover my mouse over that face, hit L to hit everything that's linked to that face, H to hide. Okay, so now we can look at the back of our cushion here. Uh, this face we can get rid of, I'm fairly certain, so X, delete faces. Uh, this one here, yeah, X, delete faces. I think we can get rid of, let's see, probably this one. X faces. Okay, I think we can get rid of all of that. Yeah, I think we can get rid of all of that with no no problems. So now still in edit mode, I'm going to hit Alt H to bring back what we hid in edit mode. A to deselect everything. Looks like we're looking pretty good. I don't see any any strange gaps. Whoops. I don't see any uh strange gaps or anything there, so I think we're pretty good there. Um, looks like we can get rid of, okay, let me hover over here, hit L to link all that, H to hide, and it looks like we can get rid of that face, uh, <clears throat> that face, and I think that's it. I don't want to get rid of that back one because I, I'm afraid we might see it. So here in edit mode, Alt H to bring back what we hid, deselect. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. So I think I think that object is doing just fine. Now we could do the same thing for the stripes, but the stripes are going to be so small. Um, I think when it comes time to uh, to do the uh, material on these. We're just gonna get, we're gonna make this uh, a very small space. So I don't think that will matter too much. I mean, we could probably delete some of the vertices, some of the faces on the bottom there, and it wouldn't. Uh, I don't think it's gonna matter in the long run. So, okay. In object mode now, Alt H to bring back what we've hidden. So this object should be cleaned up now. What I want to do though is make this one object instead of three, because right now we have the base, the seat, and the stripes. We could leave them all separate, but what I want to do is delete this whole thing, move it over here, turn it around so it faces this seat so we can have a table in the middle. And if we uh, go into wireframe and we hit B to border select and we select all those objects, um, well, here, let, let's see. We'll do Shift D to duplicate. We have duplicated the object and it's automatically in transform mode. So let's hit X to lock it to the X axis. We'll move it over here, right? Now, if we hit R to rotate this now, and we hit Z to rotate around the Z axis, and we rotate it around, you'll see that things start to move apart and we can rotate it around and grab that seat and move it forward and try to line it up again. Um, but let, let's try something something different. Okay, let, let's let's focus on on this duplicated object right here. So let's see. If we press control J to join all those objects, I'm sorry, maybe it's uh, it is control J. Yeah, let's. Okay, we'll make sure that we have just those selected. Let's try control J. No? Okay, let's try join. Okay, something's something's not not working here. Let me see. 
those are our stripes and okay what we need to do um, these stripes I think are still yeah our stripes are still a curve they're not an actual mesh object just yet so from object mode they're both joined together but we need to go into our object menu here convert to which is alt C is the shortcut mesh from curve so now these these stripe objects are now no, no longer a mesh they're an actual I mean I'm sorry they're no longer a curve they're an actual mesh with vertices and faces just like everything else so now from object mode we can have our stripes our seat and our base all selected hit control J and join those all together in one object but you can see there's an issue let's go into our modifiers tab here and you'll see this object uh, has no modifiers on it so let's go ahead and add back the subsurf modifier and see what we get okay that looks a little more like what it looked like a second ago um, the reason that happened is because though our seat had the subsurf modifier on it the base and the stripes did not so when we joined everything it uh, it got rid of the subsurf modifier and you can see without it it looks kind of kind of boxy and you know it doesn't look like what we want so just added the subsurf modifier back in now that did ramp round off our base just a little bit um, I don't think that looks too bad though I mean we can sharpen that up if we want to later on what we do need to do though is adjust these stripes because now that they have the subsurf modifier applied to them they've rounded off a little bit and uh, they just need some adjusting so what we can do to fix that remember we're, it's all one object now so we can uh, hit R to rotate around the z-axis 180 degrees and enter now it's, it's spun around and it's facing the other seat and everything worked out fine but we do need to adjust these stripes let's go over that real quick I'll just demonstrate how to do it and then we'll uh, we'll call it we'll call it a day for this video this this um, uh, watching me do this whole thing on all the stripes will be kind of tedious so I'll just show you how to do it and then we'll uh, we'll come back in the next video and start modeling the table all right, so with this object selected, we'll go into edit mode. And remember, our stripes are now made up of uh, vertices, edges, and faces, just like a regular object. They're now no longer a curve. So we'll control tab, go back to vertex select mode. Now, I don't think we can, yeah, we can't select these vertices because they're actually behind these vertices. So we'll need to go into wireframe mode. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this, we'll grab this one, this one down here maybe. Go back in the solid mode. Uh, I want to make sure that proportional editing is on, but in connected mode. So instead of moving the entire mesh under our influence, we're only going to move what is connected uh, under our influence. You'll see what I mean in a second here. Um, if I hit G to grab, I'm going to raise our area of influence a little bit by rotating my mouse wheel. And if I, I can move this way out, and you'll see it moves what it's connected to, but it's not moving the uh, geometry that's not connected to it, which is exactly what we want here. So we're going to grab that in the X direction, slide it out just a hair. I'm going to select this vertex here, go back in the solid mode, and we're going to grab that in the Z direction, just a hair. Okay. Uh, grab it again in the X direction, move it out a little bit. I'm going to hit my numpad period to center on that vertex there so we can see it a little bit better. Looks like we need to do some more adjusting on that, so I'm going to grab an X. Looks pretty good. All right, this one we can see needs some adjusting, so Z to go into wireframe, grab one of those vertices, Z to go back in the solid mode so we can see a little bit better what we're doing. Uh, uh, G to grab, and uh, grab in the Z direction, and we'll pull that whole thing up a little bit. Uh, looks like we need to go up just a little bit more, so grab in Z, 
There we go. All right, let's move on down the line here. Looks like uh, looks not too bad. Looks like we have a little dip below the surface here. So let's go Z into wireframe. We'll pick one of those. Z to go back in the solid numpad period to zoom in on that point. Um, grab in the Z direction. Uh, I'm going to narrow my influence a little bit, maybe to about there. Uh, pull it up a little bit, like so. Let's, yeah, let's grab this one too. Grab Z, pull it up just a bit. Well, you get the point. Um, we're going. To, I'm going to do that on all the stripes. Looks like we have a little dip below the surface there that we need to adjust. And um, this stripe going up the back looks quite a bit thicker than this. So let's look at that real quick. I'm going to hit A to deselect everything. Hover my, my mouse over this ver vertex. Hit L. Whoops. Z to go into wireframe. L to select all those. Z to go back in the solid. And I'm going to scale all those in uh, the Y direction and just make them a little bit thinner, like so. Okay, um, so I am going to go ahead and adjust the stripes on this object uh, to make sure that they, they're looking uh, the way that I want them to look. And then, rather than do that same thing, you know, make this all one object, uh, re-add the subsurf modifier and readjust the stripes, I'll probably just delete this one, duplicate this one once it's all adjusted, uh, move it over and spin it around so it faces. Uh, so I think at that point we'll be ready to start modeling the table, which we'll do in the next video. Alright, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you next time.